We'll begin with the Israeli military reducing its number of ground troops in southern Gaza. Officials made the announcement yesterday saying the country is pulling the 98th Commando Division out of the area to, quote, recuperate and prepare for future operations. Now, it's not clear if this is just a simple troop rot rotation raising fears that the Israeli military may be preparing to launch a ground offensive in Rafah, where more than a million people have sought refuge. The move comes as Israel marks six months since the October 7th terrorist attack. Yesterday, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu praised the military's achievements in the war thus far and reiterated his call to release the more than 100 hostages in Gaza, saying there will be no ceasefire until that happens. The war is now the longest involving Israel since the 1980s. And some have been questioning whether Netanyahu is dragging out the conflict to prevent the collapse of his right-wing coalition and extend his time in office. This as the war has caused ramifications beyond the Gazan border. As the New York Times notes, the war has derailed efforts to normalize diplomatic relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia, prompted protests in Arab states, strained Israel's international legitimacy, and has threatened to evolve into a regional conflict. And of course, there's the hostages and the families and the country of Israel uh, and others who are in misery, in agony, awaiting to learn their fate. The hostages now being held over six months. Uh, it's just unspeakable no. what the families are going through. Unspeakable about how things have been so badly mismanaged in Israel by Netanyahu from the very beginning, how badly they were mismanaged uh, when 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 they had information that this attack was coming and they didn't act on it, when they continued to fund Hamas, Netanyahu continued to fund Hamas. And you've had over 240 people that were kidnapped on October 7th, 123 released, four Americans among those freed, but 100 plus people still in captivity, including six Americans. Mm -hmm. 30 uh, have been declared dead. David Ignatius, uh, I spoke all weekend with as I know you did, uh, with, with, with many people involved in this uh, uh, conflict, there is frustration and anger on the Israeli side, uh, saying we have to go in Rafah, we can't allow Hamas to survive. And then the rest of the world is saying you, can't, you don't have the political space to kill 10,000 more civilians to achieve your military goals. So here we have, we have this tough reality that we always talk about. Two truths. One, I believe, and I think a lot of friends of Israel believe, Hamas must be destroyed. That said, 10, 15,000 more civilian deaths to do that, uh, and the onset of a famine to do that is just something that is not politically possible in the United States, across the region, across the globe. So, uh, how does this play itself out over the next uh, month? So, Joe, we're going to be watching, I think, over the next uh, week, the, I'd say, strong possibility, maybe even likelihood of a, of a hostage deal, which would obviously be a, a joyous moment. Um, you think about a, the six-month anniversary of, of this war, and you think first of how it began, just the absolute horror Mm. of October 7. Um, I, I think like you and Mika had the painful uh, experience of watching the GoPro videos uh, of, of that massacre as it happened. Uh, Israelis will never forget those images. I won't either. But that's, that's how it began, with this horrible attack that's, that's still in the dreams and nightmares of Israelis. After We have to remember that. Mm -hmm. And then I watched from Israel, from Gaza, um, the, the confusion that is true up to this very day on the Israeli side about how this ends, about what comes after, uh, what, will, what will Gaza be like in the future. It's something Israelis oddly never really gave um, systematic thought to. So, so we had a, an announcement Sunday by the IDF that they will be withdrawing 
all their major combat forces from Gaza. They will have uh, one brigade left where they once had four divisions, an enormous force in Gaza, that they're down to a very few people. There are no signs, I'm told, that, that they're actually preparing for an assault on Rafah. Netanyahu keeps talking about it, but, but they haven't put the troops in place, certainly haven't put the provisions for s civilians in place. There is now a surge that seems to be underway, finally, finally, in humanitarian assistance. There were over 330 trucks that went in yesterday, the highest number since the war began. I'm told that that number will grow this week. And, and finally, we have some, some real pressure at last on Qatar to um, insist that Hamas take part in this in this ceasefire arrangement and, and begin to stabilize things. I, I'm told that the message from President Biden to Sheikh Tamim, the ruler of Qatar, uh, uh, last Friday was, look, if Hamas does not agree to these terms, Hamas cannot have a place in your country where uh, Hamas has had refuge. So finally, that would, that would be an important uh, move. But, you know, to, to sum it up, uh, Joe, this, this war has brought devastation, horror to everyone. Um, I, I can't imagine that Netanyahu will stay in, in power much longer. He's deeply unpopular in Israel. Uh, it, it's, it's a war that uh, could lead to a, still to a breakthrough in a more stable region. But today, looking, what you see is devastation, uh, a, a, the, the enormous tragedy of war for civilians. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.